Hi, everybody out there. Uh, thanks for joining us for today's webinar entitled Doing More with Less. Uh, I, I do want to point out up front that today's uh, session is being recorded and will be available on our website sometime early next week. Um, if you've been with us for a webinar before, um, then you can expect a little different format today. Um, we're actually going to be doing a Q&A session style, um, which means a little more dialogue, um, more banter, and uh, less of the, the sly monotony that typically happens with webinars. So um, the conversation will actually follow a, a standard kind of case study flow um, without spending some time talking about um, the challenges, solution, and, and outcomes that Harris Associates uh, experienced uh, in this particular portion of their ServiceNow journey. So, uh, who's with us today for the Q&A? We have Paolo uh, from Harris Associates and Chris from Fruition Partners. Actually, Paolo, if you could just say hello real quick so people can put uh, the voice with the face. Hello, everybody. Chris, you do the same. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. This is Chris. Good deal. Yeah, very exciting uh, to have these guys with us today. So, um, Chris and Paolo have actually been working together for um, the last 14 or 15 months, um, and both will be sharing... Um, you know, a little more detail around the Harris Associates story. Um, to give you guys a little more background on what exactly that story entails, um, Harris Associates is a Chicago-based investment firm um, right here in our backyard. Uh, before they implemented ServiceNow back in April of 2014, Paolo and the rest of his service desk team um, already had a, a post-implementation support strategy in place um, so instead of going the traditional route with in-house support, um, they actually um, came to Fruition Partners Management as a service. So since forging that, uh, you know, partnership relationship uh, about 14 to 15 months ago, um, Harris Associates has been able to cross off a lot of things from their ServiceNow to-do list, um, including, you know, projects related to IT, uh, service management, workflow management, asset management, um, you know, across all departments in the organization beyond IT. Um, so again, Paolo and, and Chris are here to share their firsthand experience and hopefully convey some tricks on, um, you know, how you can do more with your ServiceNow platform in less time. So last, uh, you know, uh, overview slide here. Um, so webinar participation, if you've been with us for a webinar in the past, um, you know that, you know, we like to keep things engaging. So, um, you know, I'll be today's moderator and we'll be asking a majority of the questions, but, you know, I encourage all of you out there to ask your questions as well. So I'll be keeping a close eye on that question box. Um, so again, question at any time, submit it, and, and we'll get to it if, if time permits. Um, if you prefer social, um, you can also tweet at us. Um, using the Twitter handle up there and the hashtag. So that's it for the housekeeping. Um, let's uh, jump right into the discussion. So um, again, welcome to Paolo and Chris. Um, thanks for being with us today. Um, so let's open things up by talking a little bit about Harris Associates and understanding um, why you guys chose ServiceNow. Um, so as I mentioned um, a couple minutes ago, Harris Associates is a small um, investment firm here in Chicago. Um, Paolo, can you tell us how many uh, employees you guys have? How small are you? Uh, we are currently 188 uh, employees, uh, single location here in Chicago. So pretty small. Very small. Um, so, you know, typically it's uh, the enterprise uh, size companies uh, that we hear about making a move to ServiceNow. Um, you know, what, what convinced you guys at 188 people to, to make the, the jump to ServiceNow? We wanted to utilize all the functionality in ServiceNow to show the value that um, IT has uh, to come up with solutions. So it was definitely the platform that would help us do that. Okay. And then, uh, you know, after making the decision to go with ServiceNow, uh, I'm assuming you guys actually, actually before you made the jump to ServiceNow, had some projects in mind, had some things in mind of what you wanted to accomplish with the platform. Um, 
what exactly were you guys hoping to do in that first six months, first 12 months? Uh, the immediate need was definitely ensure that we had um, the capability to respond to our customer requests, uh, catalog our, uh, our incidents, our problems, our changes, and effectively have the system of record for all of the all the IT activities that were going on uh, for support for the firm. So it's our basic incident change uh, problem uh, implementation, which is pretty standard. It sounds you know it seems like with a lot of new yeah. service now customers, right? Right. Um, so actually, you know, you and I have. Uh, talked a bit in the past, and, and one of the things you mentioned to me that I found most interesting was that um, you know you guys had uh, a post implementation support strategy in place before really even implementing ServiceNow, which is rare. Um, you know what gave you guys the foresight to to do that to put that in place? Uh, definitely previous experience with the platform, uh, knowing uh, that in order to achieve uh, really fast success, we were going to need a lot of um, agile uh, level of development um, and having developers uh, quickly enable to transform ideas into the solutions that we were looking for. And that's a, a very large learning curve uh, for new people to the organization as well as an organization that was not familiar with ServiceNow previously. So we had already wanted to have the uh, post implementation support strategy in place so that we knew how we were going to be able to transform things quickly. Got it. Okay. And it seemed you you had an idea that 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 sort of support could only be found by uh, you know working with an experienced partner, somebody outside of, of Harris Associates. Um, what, what what did you see as being the biggest challenges if you were to keep that support in house? Uh, being able to See outside of the box. Um, internal developers have a tendency to solve just within the, the environment that they're in, mm -hmm. as opposed to being exposed to uh, many uh, types of uh, mm -hmm. problems that they're solving. Um, so it, it definitely is a different focus. Um, so that, that's what we were really leaning towards. Okay. Great. So we actually can. Uh, you know, now that we have a little background on, you know, uh, who Harris Associates is and, and what they were, you know, trying to accomplish with uh, their ServiceNow platform, we can kind of talk a little bit more about, um, you know, the solution, which was, you know, working with Fruition Partners Management as a service. So, um, so again, this is kind of the solution section of the of the Q and A. Um, we decided to call it Brothers in Arms, uh, just because. Uh, Chris and Paolo wanted to use a picture of their their biceps here, so um, I'm sure you guys can follow them after the webinar to find out what uh, their workout routines are. Um, so, Paolo, at this point, you mentioned you guys, you know, already made the decision to go with um, an outside partner. So, what was it that stood out about um, Fruition Partners Management as a service? Uh, previous experience with Fruition on the training side of the ITIL model. Um, proved successful in other implementations that I had interacted with Fruition. Um, just the fundamental uh, knowledge around the ITIL processes, the importance of them uh, outside of certification, but just the advising of how to successfully implement ITIL models um, was definitely a, a known strength that I knew. Um, and looking at the managed service model, I could tell that they were able to grow what they knew about the ITIL delivery model and then put the development on top of that to transform those ideas. Um, so I knew that this was probably a very good, uh, a good marriage of the two of the two facets of IT service delivery. So then, um, b b before Fortune Partners kind of came in and, and the partnership started, uh, what was the state of your support team or your service desk team um, at that point? Was there even there, support team in place. there was not a support team in place at all. Um, it was a very uh, uh, a non single point of contact type of approach, especially for being a very small organization. It was an organization that was very used to um, the I have a guy syndrome and uh, definitely reaching out to everybody, broadcasting the need to uh, 40, uh, 40 IT people. Um, and so everyone served the purpose of uh, technical support but had no way to organize it. Mm -hmm. um, so right off the bat, ITIL just comes to the, 
come to the top of the idea of we need to bring some order into the chaos. Um, and so incident problem and change helps us do that. The ITIL methodology definitely helps us do that. But then looking ahead to transform the other ideas, what else are we attempting to solve outside of just providing technical support, uh, transforming our IT group into uh, um, solution providers and not just uh, folks that throw water on the fire. Um, so that that is a transformative change that when we look for managed service, we wanted to take the ideas that we had internally in IT, things that we know that we're capable of doing, but we need a little help in organizing the way that we do it. So then, Chris, this is actually a question for you. Um, you know, what what type of roles have we been able to provide to Paolo and his team through the, the management as a service? practice or program. Right, right. So in, in management and service, you actually get a pretty well-rounded uh, team and a, and a few varying roles. So uh, everything, everything from a delivery manager, which which I play that role, uh, a BA, uh, QA, um, uh, architect or technical account lead, as well as a team of developers. And, you know, obviously that's, that's you know, you know, talking about four to six people. And this is a pretty consistent team, right, since, since yes. we started this yes. partnership? The way, the way we operate is we have a, a, a named people, primary team that works with uh, works with Harris uh, to fulfill their service now uh, asks and, and issues. Um, you know, we can, if there's something that the team is not well versed in, we can reach into the larger fruition team, um, for example. And, you know, I was saying, you know, we're talking about four to six people. That's not necessarily four to six full-time um, equivalents. As, uh, you know, there, there might not be a need for that, so we have the ability to uh, offer, you know, fractionalized people. So, for example, uh, a quarter time of an architect is, is kind of what we look at, and it's, it's slightly different from our, our virtual admin model, where it's strictly hours based. Um, here, it's really a uh, demand based model, so uh, we're able to, to flex with, um, you know, the, the needs of the customer. Yeah, that's nice, that, that fractional piece, because it kind of alleviates the responsibility that would normally come with. I mean, if you were to, you know, with, with hiring somebody full-time, I mean, you either have a full, full-time full employee or you don't, like, you, you really can't, um, like you said, fractionalize right, that, right. that role or that position. So that's something that, that management as a service offers, which is kind of nice. Um, so how often do you, do you guys have discussions around, as you mentioned, you know, issues or new development efforts? How often do you guys have conversations around that? Yeah, so our, our, we really focus on two main areas, uh, sustaining operations, so you know, responding to incidents and, you know, if there are uh, day-to-day requests of ServiceNow, changing groups, users, et cetera, but also the probably the more, more important thing, a more value-add piece is around the sustaining engineering, so doing things like enhancements and working together to um, really build upon the platform and, and show the value of what uh, and the power of what ServiceNow can do. So back to your question, right, how often do we meet? You know, we have a, a standard release cadence where we're meeting, uh, we do a release kickoff and planning on a, on a Monday, uh, and then the following Friday we're, we're pushing to production. So and we, we meet as needed uh, throughout those two weeks. Uh, but then also if there are, if there's, an, if there's issues that come up uh, throughout the week, um, the incident comes up that, that needs resolution, we jump on the call, jump on a go-to-meeting in WebEx and uh, work with that. So, uh, numerous times per week. Uh, nice. And it's been a pretty responsive, I mean, from your point of view. Uh, if, if something comes up that, that hasn't been scheduled or just kind of on the fly, it's easy access to these guys. Absolutely. Uh, the accessibility is definitely one of the key factors of, uh, of, uh, of our success is just being able to reach out when we know that, you know, we may have um, even urgencies and enhancements. Um, or if we have an issue that comes up um, because of an enhancement, it, it, be, it becomes a top priority for us to get together uh, quickly. So probably a, a question um, a lot of people want to want to hear the answer to, um, since we are kind of in the solution section and you know we're talking about accomplishment. Um, what exactly have you guys been able to accomplishment um, since um, you know going live with ServiceNow? Uh, I know you mentioned some of the basic. ITSM things, incident change management. Um, anything else that you've been able to kind of cross off the list specifically or, or that's currently in the works? Um, I would like to speak to two particular solutions that I think that were um, fairly extraordinary for the platform and for our business. Uh, one was audit. Uh, we're a very uh, heavy, reg heavily regulated um, uh, organization and so we, we're under constant uh, 
um, audit profile. So we're needing to produce a lot of records for audit maintenance and audit accessibility for internal and external auditors. Um, and we've made a we've made workflows that allow us to be able to see this information uh, rather quickly, including just making an audit request uh, to be able to uh, review system access. Um, that in of itself is something that it, it's not really seen as a solution that ServiceNow does, but it, it actually is a function that we were able to pull out. Um, and a second uh, item, which is also uh, because of our, our heavy regulations, we have a legal and compliance team that um, have to adhere to a very strict schedule of filing, uh, regula uh, regulatory filings on a, a very scheduled basis throughout the year. And they wanted a way to manage that, provide visibility to it, uh, provide some accountability with simple workflow um, around tasks that are being assigned to people. Um, so they came to IT. They asked us, you know, is there a way we could do this? And instead of thinking of the traditional um, task reminder type of activities or functions that uh, an organization would typically look at, like say Outlook or or other workflow utilities, um, we said, why not do it within uh, ServiceNow? And it'll give you um, a, a very flexible way of seeing the work and transparency across the team for an entire department. And uh, that's where Fruition Partners definitely uh, stepped up to the plate and said, yeah, we can solution that. Uh, let us show you a couple of demos. And it, it worked out fabulously. Um, and now we do have uh, an entire legal and, um, and compliance department that's using that in production right now as their uh, their regulatory filing compliance system, which is, uh, is, is, is a standout achievement for that. That's great. Do you think, um, you know, how would you, what would you attribute to the success that you guys have had, um, you know, since going live with ServiceNow? Is it more, you know, besides your organization, which is small, you know, nimble, agile, not a lot of red tape nonsense, or is it, you know, more kind of having that expert uh, support at your disposal, or is it a combination? It's definitely a combination, but it doesn't, uh, I don't think uh, it can be overlooked that the, the quality of the expertise with, behind the solution, um, that, that definitely stands out, because we're making a, a pretty large ask, which is thinking of the platform as something different than it is. So developers and uh, the architect are given an opportunity to think outside the box themselves, too, and present us with options. Uh, we never ask for things that are so customized that we can't uh, live without someone with. We always try to make sure that we have uh, extensible solutions that we can provide to other departments. So we, we think of it very holistically. We think of it out of the box, but we do it in a way that we can implement it quickly and then show the value as fast as possible. And that, that's really the, the, the magic there. Yeah, I think um, you know, working with the customer who has the ability and the desire to be agile and, and iterate on um, on you know, enhancements or ideas has been great. Um, you know, we'll do a release cycle and uh, get them get them out the door in the first release, and then the next release improve improve upon it. Next release improve upon it. Uh, that's been a, um, a pleasure to do. Yeah, I do want to ask too about um, you know some of the things you guys are currently doing and, and on the near horizon, but um, you know we can actually save that for for the next section. Um, which we're actually about to make the jump to. So, um, you know, speaking of, you know, results um, and outcomes, uh, you know, are there any tangible benefits that you've experienced, anything that you can quantify, whether it's uh, cost savings, uh, improved efficiency, higher user adoption? What, what have you noticed? Um, definitely on the higher user adoption, um, it's definitely one of, the, one of the few experiences that I've had where I didn't have to go back to the business and say, you know, please use ServiceNow to um, uh, to send requests to IT. It, it actually, they've seen the effect of, of being able to keep all these records, to have access to the records, being able to see the metrics, and uh, no, no one's going through uh, anything extraordinary with using the system. We made it as easy as possible for people to digest it, which means that everyone got on board with it really fast. Uh, that definitely was a, a what the most critical key success factor out there was the, the rate of adoption. Yeah, that's huge because I, I feel like some of you hear that, uh, you know, anytime you're making organizational change at a company, it's it's almost as if you kind of got a jam it down their throat for them to finally, you know, accept this is what it's going to be. But for, for for Harris Associates and your colleagues to, to, to realize the benefit firsthand and say, you know, almost voluntarily, 
kind of make the move to the platform and accept it is it's huge. I think I'm thinking about a couple of meetings in particular where you know, uh, us and Paolo were talking to the business, show them service now, and you know they, they got it pretty quickly about what they could do and how they could how they could use it. Uh, but I just kind of to the either the ease of the tool and uh, what they can do. Nice. So what um, what if if any challenges remain at this point? Are are there any? Hurdles to, to overcome? De definitely, there are. Um, you know, despite being a very small organization, we deal with a lot of uh, deal a lot of email traffic, email requests, and whatnot. And uh, to the to the point of adoption, I think one of the, the really excellent aspects of how we design the the entryway into the system is that rather than fight the culture of uh, no, we you know we don't want you to email us, uh, we actually uh, embraced it. And what we did was made the email communication more meaningful. So we focused on uh, using that facet of service now to help us organize ourselves better, rather than um, telling people you have to go to to a portal to to ask for anything. Um, and that in of itself is in a work in progress over the course of the last year, where it's continually improving as we make the communications more direct, um, uh, focused. Um, with more direction, and people are now have gotten accustomed to seeing this messaging that you know they're interacting with it, and that alone is, is, a, is a huge success because we didn't have to tell anyone that you have to change the way that you work. We instead molded molded us to work the way that they do. Yep, that's great. Um, so, you know, having worked with um, you know Fortune Farmers Management as a service and you know, having used the ServiceNow platform for over a year now, um, seems like enough time for you to, you know, come up with, you know, some thoughts around, you know, what would we do differently moving forward? You know, have there been any lessons learned in that in that time span? Uh, thankfully, no. I, I don't have anything like a like the lessons learned. Uh, we've uh, between uh, Ferocious Partners, Chris and I, uh, as we work through this, we we develop the sense of the continual service improvement um, in our strategy, where we're always looking at the previous enhancement or the previous release or the previous uh, work to be done to see what could have we done better in those individual releases, so that way the next time we talk about the next release or enhancement or fix, we're thinking about what we already discussed. So it's like constantly looking not to repeat any any issues continually. Um, so continual service improvement is always on the top of our minds because with every with every release, we get better and better at it. We also get faster at it, uh, which means we can keep this this high speed up, and right. that that's really what's given us the value of being able to turn the, the stuff around quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, so when we can do that, while well, always thinking, well, we remember that the last three releases there were these kinds of things that we should watch out for to include in, into this plan, and then everyone becomes familiar with that, it makes it much much smoother release cycle. Thanks. So. Um, you know, finally, one of one of my last questions um, for you is, you know, what are you guys looking to do um, in the near future? Uh, you know, I feel like you guys are just doing so much in such a short amount of time. So it's kind of like, you know, is there anything left on the to-do list? I'm sure there's <laughs> there's plenty. There's yeah. plenty. There's definitely a lot. Um, there's still a lot more ahead of us that we want to transform. Um, uh, when we think of uh, the platform and, and the things, the projects ahead of us, there's still a lot to be done with infrastructure, event management, um, application, uh, uh, event management, and uh, and stuff like that. We still have a, a lot more vision to include more aspects of IT into it. Uh, while we still continue focusing on the business side of it, um, but again, another notable uh, success was definitely the operations incident table where we took. Uh, business feedback to capture incidents that impact business processes, and they're using the incident management process from the ITIL world, um, but giving it more of a of a of a structure and a rigor in within the ServiceNow platform. Um, so they wouldn't have thought to have used the tool that way, but we came to them with an idea, a presentation of you know we can make your lives easier in reporting these types of incidents just within the table, and we don't have to make it seem like it's all IT. Um, so little transformations like that um, definitely keep them coming back to us asking, "What more can you do for us?" So in that way, you know, we can take these ideas. We'll have plenty of work ahead of us uh, in, the, in the coming year and years. So great. 
you know, maybe, uh, maybe we'll do a webinar a year from now and hear what, what you've done uh, in 2016. All good stuff. Um, that's actually it for, for me. Um, you know, those are the, the questions I kind of wanted to present to Paolo and Chris and, you know, hopefully, and it, you know, I think we extracted some great information that hopefully, um, you know, you guys all kind of learned from, um, you know, specifically that, you know, I guess it kind of pays off to, to be ambitious, you know, uh, if, if you have the right strategy in place. So, um, we actually did have a, a one question come in um, throughout the interview here, um, and I'll actually present it to you, Paolo, to see if uh, this is possible. Ron uh, Eisenberg uh, submitted a question. He wants to know if there's a way that he can uh, talk to you a little more about what exactly um, you know Harris Associates has done and, and how how you guys have accomplished all this. So, sure. so Ron, yeah, I'll um, we'll follow up with you after this. Um, I'll send you an email um, and and copy uh, Paolo and Chris on it, and uh, we can continue the conversation. So, um, and keep in mind too, I don't know if anybody out there is um, local to Chicago, um, but again, you know, Paolo's here in downtown, so and I know he's a pretty active member of, uh, I guess, the ServiceNow user group community. So he's, he's typically uh, at, at these uh, ServiceNow user groups um, in Chicago. So um, if anybody out there is in Chicago and plans to attend, you can uh, meet him there and talk a little more. So, um, so that's it for me. So um, last thing, um, additional resources. Uh, you know, if, if uh, you want to learn a little more about the Harris Associates story or First and Partners Management as a, as a service, written case studies up on the website, fruitionpartners.com. Um, then we have a couple other assets up there as well where you can learn a little more, um, specifically a data sheet and an overview video. So um, we are um, a couple minutes before um, 11.30 here in Central, so we'll give everybody a couple minutes back. Um, two last things to mention. Uh, one, thank you to everybody for attending. Thanks to Paolo and Chris for sharing their insight. Um, and two, a uh, reminder that the webinar was recorded, um, so if you had to jump off or you want to make reference to something um, that was covered today, it will be available on the website uh, sometime early next week. So thanks for joining, everybody. Talk soon.